All right, we're going to continue on with number five on page 625 in module 13, lesson two. Write an exponential function to model each situation and then find the value of the function after the given amount of time. Number five says that annual sales for a company are $155,000 and increases at a rate of 8% per year for nine years. So at whatever time they're talking about, the starting value um, is $155,000 and then it increases annually at a rate of 8% and they want to know um, the value of the function, like how much is the annual sales after nine years. Okay, so first of all, increases at a rate of 8% should tell you that this is an exponential growth situation. And a little bit of thinking hopefully will tell you that this is your A, because that's the value of your function after like zero years. So f of x equals a b to the x. This is going to be 155,000. When x is zero, b to the zero, remember that's going to be one. And then this whole thing is just going to multiply out to be 155,000. So, all right, so we've got 155,000. And then remember, if it's an exponential growth, we're going to take 1 and then say plus 0 0.08 for our 8%. And that's our B raised to the X. If I want to know how much the annual sales are after 9 years, then I'm going to put 9 in for the X value. So what are the sales after 9 years? And then we can just put that in a calculator and figure that out. Remember, you don't do anything with this nine. You're just asking, what is the function's value after nine years? That's how you denote that, okay? So just type in into your calculator 155,000 times 1.08 raised to the ninth, and give me your answer. And you need to write it on your little homework follow along with me, both the equation and the value of the sales after nine years. All right. Oh, also I want to mention here, this is one of these word problems where if I had asked domain and range, it now no longer makes sense because of the situation that they're describing. It doesn't make sense to have like x be zero, or excuse me, x be negative values because we're not going to use like negative years, things like that. So when it was just these equations and we didn't define um, a particular situation, then we could say, you know, x ran into negative territory, x goes into positive territory territory. But here in a real world situation, um, this particular situation, it doesn't make sense to have x's with negative values, just so you know. Okay, let's look at number six. The value of a textbook is $69 and decreases at a rate of 15% per year for 11 years. Okay, so this is um, something that any of us that went to college and had our had to buy our textbooks we're very familiar with. You bought a brand new textbook maybe for $69 and when you go back um, and try to get rid of it, it's not worth as much as it was when you first bought it. And it keeps diminishing in value um, year after year. So once again, hopefully the language of the problem decreases at a rate of 15% tells you that this is an exponential decay meaning that the value is going down over time, whereas five was an exponential growth, okay? F of x is equal to a times b to the x. a is your initial value, like before any time goes by. And then in here, because it's decreasing, I'm going to take my 1.00 and subtract the 15%. So 1.00 minus 0.15, and that gives me 0 0.85. And I want to know the value of this textbook after 11 years, if it declines at a rate of 15% per year. All right, so there's your equation. You can put that equation in. Um, f of x would literally be f of 11. What's the value after 11 years? And you can solve that 
and write it in on your sheet. And, oh, uh, you might have to scratch out where it says seven and put number six, because I didn't realize I was supposed to work seven and not number six. So there's a little um, hint that, you know, will catch you if you're not listening. So on the sheet it says seven, but here it says six. So just go ahead and give me the answer for six. Scratch it out on your sheet. Okay. Also, let me remind you both about both of these situations. Both of these situations deal with money, and money only goes out to two decimal places, dollars and cents. Cents goes to two decimal places. So um, please make sure that you round properly if you wind up with a decimal, because once again, we only have dollars and cents, and cents only goes out to point zero zero or zero one or whatever, only two decimal places. Okay. Okay, so I'm now on page 626. Remember on your form it said that you were going to work number seven, but we just worked number six, so just use that instead. However, on number seven, just to look at it, we're not going to work the whole thing, but 300 would be your A value, your starting value, and it says gains 3.1%, so that would be decimal 031, and you would add it to a B of 1. So your B would wind up being 1%. 0.031 because it's increasing at a rate of 3.1 percent and then your x would be five okay number eight is the next one that i asked you to do if you read the word problem the value of a car is seventy eight hundred dollars and decreases at a rate of eight percent yearly for six years decreases at a certain rate that means that this one is a decay function again something's losing value over here this is a growth function okay by the way you can have growth functions that don't deal with money you can have a growth function that deals with like i don't know the number of bacteria over time or something like that okay all right so i want to know the value of this car after six years a is your starting value when we start talking about the situation, and that's $7,800. And it decreases at a rate of 8% per year. So I'm thinking 1.00 minus 0 0.08, and that's going to give me 0 0.92. Because I want to know after six years, that's what I'm raising it to. Again, you should be able to take your calculator, punch this in, and get the value of that car in dollars and cents for number eight. And please make sure that you write it on your little answer sheet. Okay, now I'm down at the bottom of page 626 where it says to write an exponential function for each situation, graph each function, state its domain and number range, and determine what the y-intercept represents in the context of the problem. Okay. It's a lot of wordy stuff, but this is all stuff that you've been doing. The value of a boat is depreciating at a rate of 7% per year. This is one of those words that I pointed out to you. Depreciate means that it's losing value. In 2004, the boat was worth $192,000. All right, so 2004, that would be zero years since 2004, the boat is worth a hundred and ninety two thousand dollars so something somewhere up here okay so first i'm going to start constructing my equation the value of the boat at the beginning or after zero years have gone by is a hundred and ninety two thousand dollars but it's depreciating at a rate of seven percent Per year. Remember, we're going to take 1.00 and minus that 7%, and we're going to get 0 0.93 for our B value or our common ratio, whatever you want to call it, because it's all the same. And then we're going to raise it to the X power. Well, we need to figure out, find the value of the boat in 2013. Well, if 2004 is Z, you know, year zero, then we're going to say, 2013 minus 2004, that's nine years after we start, okay? So we're going to raise this to the ninth power.
Okay. I'm only going to sketch uh, what I think you should have. Uh, let me say calculator. All right, because I'm actually going to let the um, calculator do the hard work. All right, so clear this old one out. We're going to put this equation in. Remember, I don't want just the ninth. Um, I could just do that in the regular screen for the calculator. Um, so I'm going to put it in raised to the x power so that it'll give me the curve. Okay, so there's my equation. I'm going to have to go change my window settings. Okay, so here's what I did. I So that I could see both my x and y axis, um, I let it run into the negative territory a little bit, even though negative x values don't really make sense for this situation. Um, my maximum monetary value, the y value, is going to be 192,000. So I put something a little bit bigger, scaled it to where it would tick off little marks at like one-tenth of this, and let's see what we get. Okay, so there is our curve. And if you want to know uh, what is the value after nine years, then come over here and put nine, hit enter, and its value is only $99,918.93. Okay, let's make sure that that's the value by doing it the other way and just putting it in like so as an equation. To the ninth. Enter. Okay, and there you go. $99,918.93. Remember, we only keep two decimal places if we're talking about money. Uh, make sure that you fill that out for number eight.